So basically, I feel um, in the West we've we've lost a lot of um, knowledge on how to be well, and my quest, if you like, was to find in other cultures where they might still have that knowledge, find some inspiration that we can bring back to patients with chronic long-term conditions um, in terms of managing their health and well-being. Well, I was aware very much that it's, it's part of their whole cosmology, the environment, the, their community, their, their way of looking at life. So I was, to be fair, already skeptic from the beginning how much we could find that we could translate back to, to Western cultures. Um, but what I was really looking or hoping to find was the, um, the mechanisms of the dance. So what is it when people start shaking, start dancing in community, but perhaps also solo, what that would generate in terms of life force? Very unknown. Like I've been to Africa a few times, but never this far south. Um, so even you know arriving in Namibia was completely new and the kind of landscape is new and the feel in the air is new and, and then we traveled via Waterberg up to the north to Tsunkwe which was the place where we based ourselves around so we visited a few villages around there and it was just like a like a, a wide open eyed journey for me it's like wow what's this what you know where am I what what's happening here yeah, it was interesting to notice I got a bit of stage fright. The, the, well, when we finally organized the dance, it took a while to get all the, you know, the healers lined up and uh, the pavement structures organized and stuff. So when we finally got everything organized, it's like, oh, oh my God, what am I going to wear? How am I going to move? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, how does it work? Um, but actually, yeah, I did a sort of calling uh, around lunchtime. Uh, Kasparos played some guitar music and I just called on my spirit support and felt really the, the spirits I work with come with me to the dance. Um, and again, it was like, a, like a, a journey into the unknown. Like, so the campfire is built, there was a lot of discussion where the campfire should be, where the dance would, would take place. So when it's actually there, the fire is built, you're fanning it, you're putting wood on the fire villages gathering and kind of looking out and oh, the women are sort of in a semicircle and then there's the healers then there's the fire and they they get a lot of healing force from the fire and then there was a lot of youngsters and other people who didn't actively take part in the dance but were very present for the ceremony were sort of on the other side of the fire so it really felt like a, a well-held container yeah in which everyone even though they participated or didn't participate, they really had a role, like a presence. Mm. And what did you feel that the doctors were doing in the, in the elephant dance? So my sense was that the women started to generate through their songs the power in which, through which the, the, the doctors could start shaking. Their shaking generated the power in themselves, the life force, the vitality. And there were different ways of the raising the power. So the shaking was one, but also their connection with the fire, their connection to other other healers, um, and the energy raised by other people who were dancing um, by holding the hands of their wives. That was really touching. So the different ways in which the, the healers guarded their energy. When they had enough, they would go to someone uh, and touch them and heal them. Um, and then I think they ran out at some point and they had to replenish the shake again on their own or touch the fire again or, you know. And what was it like if you to step into that and have those 12 women focusing on you singing and then having the doctors come up and do you do this? Yeah. The forehead, the top of their heads into your bed. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you raise a lot of different things there, but I felt the, the women, it, it, was, it, was, it really touched me to be the focus of 12 people singing for you, for, for the group, but, you know, focused on you. Um, and I really got that, the kind of healing is a group thing, it's not an individual thing, as we often think in the West, like, oh, I'm ill, I need to go sort myself away from the community and I can come back when I'm right again. It's really a collective thing that really touched me. Um, 
and then yeah it was it was interesting like the, like I'm used to shaking but as Caroline said at some point for us it's often like the shaking of letting go it's like letting go of something that's ready to be released and here it felt like a, a shaking to get the engine going it was really like a motor um, firing up so I had, yeah there were moments I thought oh am I doing it right am I shaking uh, in, in the correct way um, and then I just let the thought go and let my body take over that was another part to it and then and then how the doctors touched you was yeah it was interesting they touched you on the sides on the front on the back on the hips they had this uh, I don't know what it was made of but something they prodded in your belly button which hurt quite a lot uh, for a few days afterwards actually and I still don't know uh, what it physically did their explanation was that it aligned the arrows or the needles inside inside of my stomach um, yeah, so that was again a sort of curiosity of like letting it happen and think, okay, there's now some... Yeah, it really felt like the energy of the elephants around us, so that the, the healers were snorting and they were some, some uh, tapping your calves with their legs and, and it felt like the tusk going in different places in your body and, and the headbutt kind of in yeah, the back and in the front. And yeah, it was, I felt like I was in a herd of elephants. After you tell you the field the next day, how, did it, what, how was your energy? Yes. Did it feel like you being... <laughs> That's not the, it's like the, the day after that one, I was so grumpy. I don't know. I felt like something really, like, um, I don't know what happened, but something happened. And I had a sore net, be, belly bot, button for a few days and it, it did worry me. <laughs> I thought, oh, I never knew my belly button was kind of that bruised or, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I, from the first dance, I, I don't quite know how I felt, but the second time we danced, I felt very soft and very kind of aligned afterwards. So maybe that was also necessary to do it more than once. Do. Um, to kind of get into the field, to, to surrender to what's happening. Um, yeah, and maybe the first was, I was a bit, yeah, too much on, my, on the alert kind of thing, like what's happening. So I don't know if that affected the type of healing or... Yeah, but I felt strange a few days after that. Well, I felt really connected and organized and sorted after the second dance we did. Let's talk about the second dance because it was different. If there was this... There was somebody who was ill who was being mm. healed as opposed to yeah. this healthy Westerners. Stuff yeah. And, and I, so just describe how different that second dance so first of all we were in a different village um, but we were with, working with the same three healers so two of them belonged to that village and the other one was from the previous village we danced who we brought in um, my sense was that there was a, a much stronger support for the healers as if the healers in the second village no sorry the, the people in the second village had more experience somehow that they knew how to support doctors. Like there were three or four other men who really kept a very keen eye on the doctors. And if they only showed the slightest sign of going into trance or rigid or falling, they would come up and really hold the doctor and, you know, make sure that he didn't fall in the fire or something. And so, and there were two other people who we later learned they were in training to become doctors. And one older man who I think had been a doctor before, but he didn't participate in the healing, but he did participate in the shaking, which raised energy, or seemed to raise energy. So I think there was a lot more support for the healers. And then there was the, the two sick women, actually, who really needed their attention and their support. And it almost felt like, oh, that, that too, like the, um, the women singing and the doctor's healing is a... Is a is connected. Also the power that the, the healers had and the presence of someone who needed the healing that also felt that it raised their power again. Mm. Yeah, so there's an actual need for the dance to happen, for the ceremony to happen and yeah, there were small, smaller healings happening in the first dance I think, but this was really, really the focus of the evening and yeah, again I felt that was really knitting together kind of and addressing the balance of the village and the, the issues that were alive in the village at that time and so the woman that was really weak and in a lot of pain the healers explained that she was carrying a lot of uh, jealousy uh, for the whole village which made her ill. So do you think it's a medical 
Look, uh, do you think they are spiritual or emotional? Are they psychotherapists? Are they osteopathists? Are they acupuncturists? Are they... What kind of medicine do you think this is? Well, I wouldn't put any Western labels on it or, or other labels on it, but I feel it's a shaking medicine. This one is definitely not so much the, the giraffe dance. Um, but I feel it's a combination of both um, both spiritual and physical. Um, yeah, I'm now getting a bit confused between the giraffe and the elephant well, dance. Let's talk about the um, giraffe dance because that's very different. And, mm. and how was that? How was it first meeting? Um, Kuntabu. Um, he is spoken of very well by everyone we met. So there was this, wow, this is the last giraffe dance healer. So I felt a lot of, you know, he carries uh, the torch in a way for, for that particular medicine. Um, and as I understood both the elephant and the giraffe dance, that is part of their mythology and the culture. And they, they, I think if I remember right, they were the animals that first became human. So it's, it's medicine that goes back a long, long time. And it feels very different to the, to the elephant dance. Um, so basically it's a circle of women set around the fire, around which the, the healers dance. Um, and to me, that of the three dances we did felt most like the community celebrating. There were little healings happening again, but you know, there wasn't an, a, an obviously ill person. Um, to, to receive the healing. So it very much felt like raising the energy, again, the exchange between men and women, women singing, men dancing mostly, though the women did join in later. Um, yeah, that felt like the, yeah, the knitting together of the community at, at its strongest. Yeah. And I would like to say more about what you asked before in terms of the spiritual or, or physical. Mm -hmm. So I remember Kuntabu starting when we asked him the question. He started to explain, well, we can cure stomach pain or headaches or um, if someone was witched, they called it. Um, so the witch thing is already in the kind of more etherical, spiritual uh, realm. Uh, but the others are very properly physical thing physical ailments or, or the woman that was in the in the second elephant dance she was very tired she had a lot of pain she couldn't walk very well those are very physical but then again healing the jealousy of the culture that's in more emotional maybe spiritual terms yeah so I think it's a fusion of both and I was interested it, it, we asked this question uh, to various healers and what I understood was they can they can take away the cause of things through this type of dance, but then sometimes it might be necessary to go to a Western clinic to take away the results of it or the pain or the symptoms of it. So in that way, it was really working together somehow, the, the traditional and the modern Western medicine. So in conclusion, what can we take from the Namibian doctors, mm. the sound doctors? What could we use in the West? Hello. I love your red feet. Sorry. Um, I really have a sense of um, like a, a palette almost of different colors or different tastes, which is the importance of community, the importance of looking after each other the importance to know that when you're ill it's not just your burden to carry it's a collective thing um, I'm really moved by um, what I've learned about the ancestors here and the way of looking at death and dying and and in the West it's often like the fear of dying alone or uh, the fear of being forgotten and that sense if we have a different um, way of looking at a continuation of life after death in whatever form I mean I don't know what kind of form but we, you know, parts of us live on in some way and are remembered, that it might help us accept our mortality and, and therefore make the, yeah, the burden of ill health <clears throat> not easier to carry, but, you know, to give it a different place. 
So community, different way of looking at living and dying. Um, and, and, and the life force of the shaking. You know, so I, I was touched like every time we asked the healers, what do we need to stay healthy? It's like dance every day. And I was really moved by that. Um, so I don't think that we need to take this home and say everyone needs the shaking medicine. But I do think the message of, well, reinforcing the message of movement and, you know, exercise is good. And yeah, it's sort of great to know that 40,000 year old original humans on the planet see dance as the healthiest thing they can do. Yeah, I know. So is there such a thing as a healthy shake? Oh! <laughs> Have you changed your mind about that? No, I still think it's good. It's healthy to shake. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and another thing that I really understood in the very brief time we've been here is um, that every everything we do has an impact. And so, for example, if the people here make a knife that they do ceremony, I think five times the amount of time that it took to extract the materials from, from the tree or from the ground for the metal or something. And so it, it kind of, it isn't just about taking, oh, I'll buy the next thing, oh, I, I want this, I buy it from a shop and, and I have it. It's actually about the reciprocity of what has it taken to make this. No. So it's, uh, yeah, it, you, you, you enter into relationship with the, yeah, the objects you have around you in your life as well. And there's a different way of respecting them. And, you know, I always remember I, I spent a few weeks in the monastery of Thich Nhat Hanh in southern France. And he said, treat even the dishes as your friend, you know, so treat them with respect. There's been, sorry, I think there's a, a bug in my, in my trousers. <laughs> You know, um, so they, the empty plate that has carried your food, thank it because there was food for you to eat this day. Wash the dishes with that same respect. So if the, if the doorbell rings, say, sorry dishes, I will come back to you. Uh, I'll just have to answer the door. But there is a relationship between you and the dishes. And I, one of the things I was at, like the, the, the little, what do you call it? Thing where the, the water disappears in the sink. Plug. The plug where there's some food gathered and you kind of go like, oh, that's the kind of uh, thing to do at the end of the day, clean that and put it in. But there is something that, you know, it's left over and there was food for me to eat, that there is some rice left over and, you know, I, I have that abundance in my life. So, yeah, the cultivation of gratitude in, in that for food in the fridge or a house, a roof over your house. Or, Yeah, it's still formulating in my head, so I might might need a bit of time. But it's about the um, the experiences in in the body when dancing. Um, so it felt like um, like I said before, the the motor being fired up, the engine being fired up. Um, but there were moments when um, when the sort of the shake started from the hips. And I felt a vibration in the whole body, but actually my torso was really still and calm. And that was a moment where it felt like there was a real like spaci spaciousness inside, like, a, like I felt somehow hollow inside, while connected to the whole, I don't know, world around somehow. And still the shaking went on. And that was a really exquisite moment of stillness within the shaking. So I was really intrigued by that and and if that is what the doctors are getting at. Do you know what I mean? Kind of, yeah. So that happened in the first evening. And the second, so the second dance at Downpost, it was much easier to reach that place. And and I felt there was only once, but I think the, um, the, the healers in that moment put my hands on someone else. So I was a bit like, oh, what? I mean, they recognized that I was in another space or maybe that's the space from which the healing happens. And what I'm curious about is what are the ways culturally 
to get to that place and if, it's, if this is the only way to reach that place, which I don't think it is. But it was nice to access it through this specific medicine on this specific land and then starting to, to get to know that place. And I'm really curious to learn from other cultures as well if, if healing happens from a similar place like that. And then especially how dance triggers that reaches that space. Can you talk a bit more about what you mean by the place? That space of shaking in stillness and that space of connection in, in that hollowness, in that emptiness. So there's a hollowing, there's an emptiness inside that happens, is there, through the shaking? Is there some, I mean, are we channeling something from ancestry or... Is there, what's, what is there on another dimension than just shaking like animal shape to get rid of stress? Mm. Is there, did you get a sense of the other dimension? It felt like, and that's actually the first time I've ever experienced it like that, is like it was an emptying, so that there was a real pure other energy coming through. And I don't know what type of energy, but if you call it spirit or divine or God or healing medicine, it, w it was something so the almost like the spaciousness allowed that other substance to come in. And I think that's the substance that allows the healing to happen. Is that what the Bushman called Nom? Yeah, I don't know if I'm the right person to say that after only three, but three experiences, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they're talking about. Yeah. That that's the norm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I hadn't realized that. Yeah. Mm. Yes. All right. Mr. Brown beard.